Um, I can't really use my cursor too well without screwing up. So this is what I have so far. Um, complex numbers work in at least addition form when you separate them onto their own orthogonal planes. Um, the imaginary number line goes orthogonal to the real number line, which is all these primary numbers, three, two, one, and four. The imaginary number counterparts are negative two i and positive five i. So to get the central ghost number, you add the two parts together in here. 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 4 is 10. So that's the real number part. Two, negative 2i two plus 5i is positive 3i. And that's the imaginary number part. And they all come together in the ghost number, central ghost number Q. Except they don't fit quite well. So when you do the addition, at least in addition form, I haven't discovered in math and multiplication form yet, but uh, I have a hunch that it'll work somehow. But you separate, the key is to separate the two components of the complex number. All of these are real numbers, these four numbers around here. These two are complex, or imaginary counterparts, the, the imaginary parts of the complex numbers. So um, when you do like you do before in all normal ghost number cubes, you add up the six numbers of the octants of each of the eight, outer eight octants or each of the central eight octants you get the purple ghost numbers the inner layer ghost numbers now this over here is 15 negative 6i over here is 15 positive 15i so you trap so it's negative 6 and positive 15 is positive 9 which is right on both sides then over here is 9 negative 6i down here is 21 positive 15i so 6 negative 16 plus positive 15 for the imaginary part you get 9 on both sides positive 9i and then of course 21 and 9 together are 30 so 30 30 plus 9i, the imaginary part, the positive, the real number part and the imaginary number part are reflected on both sides as in all normal magic ghost number cubes. So this shows that a, at least in addition form, complex numbers work in the least addition form when you separate them onto their own orthogonal, orthogonal gonal planes. And um, they follow the rule that Three central ghost numbers add up to the outer ghost numbers 30 plus 9i. Um, I think I explained this enough. I didn't fill out the whole thing because I didn't want to make it too messy. But um, these are the primary numbers. That's what you start all magic ghost number cubes with, with the six primary numbers. Except on the horizontal plane, that's the real number line. And I guess they could be negative on these back octants. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure. But then the positive, the imaginary parts stay on the horizontal or the vertical axis because that's how they appear with the real numbers on the, on the, in, in any other form. So um, the key to making complex numbers work on magic US number cubes to have them come out right is to um, separate the imaginary components from the real number components of the primary numbers. And um, when they come together, they create 10 plus 3i to the third power or to the third three times. And I imagine in the multiplication cube, as always, it would be 10 plus 3i times itself three times that would be like a thousand um plus i can't work out that nine 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 twenty seven uh i'm not really sure but um i think i'm right 
but this is the this is uh, hopefully the shortest and most easily understandable part of my magic choice number cube advances so far. But um, I discovered the complex number then works in the least addition form when you separate them, the two components, the imaginary and the real, on their own horizontal and vertical axis, the imaginary axis and the real axis. Um, so, uh, thanks a lot. Bye.